the world you can hear them. Hey, hey, hey! Talking about losing kind of funny stuff. Hey, hey, hey! Magra. What's go? What goes on at the Jupiter Waterfront Inn? Uh, it's a little, um, what I would call an independently owned hotel, right on the uh, beautiful intercoastal in northern Palm Beach County, right where Tequesta and Jupiter coincide. Okay. Um, so you guys will have a lovely waterfront view. Um, manatee swim by or uh, swim around there. You, we could take. I could bring my paddle boards over if you guys want to try paddle boarding. We could do that. You could go fishing. I think we've already decided we're going to go to a amateur wrestling event. Um, well, thinking. remember I was looking through my notes, and in the old days we had the thing where we were trying something new. Remember, we even had a bad song. Yep. yep. And we, we, you hired some uh, pr- oh, yeah. lady from <laughs> uh, right. Venezuela to, <laughs> to sing a song. God, I wish that worked out better. I was so excited about that little bit when I had, when I came up with it. <laughs> My kids wrote a song as well that you didn't like, and then we kind of just gave up. Abandoned it. But this trip, we're going to try something new. Go to an amateur wrestling event? Yeah, and maybe shoot guns? Are we going to okay. maybe shoot? All right, so I didn't know if you were really serious about going to shoot guns. So uh, I, assume we you, I assume we just shoot targets. I'm not like, I don't want to like hunt people or anything. Yeah, but. The, the biggest game of all. I thought that's what we were looking for. <laughs> no, I... I mean, I just if we shoot at, like, targets, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Are you sure that's all you want to do, though? Because I, <laughs> yes. signed us up, I signed us up for something that's a little... It doesn't involve your social security number or anything like that, I promise. No, that's, all, that's all I want to do. That's all I'm signing up for. Okay. No, I've never shot a gun. All right. And you've never been to a wrestling match. I'm excited to, I'm excited to come. I went to the fair. I went to the fair last night, and I wish. I kind of wished I had brought my. Uh, my oh, the interview hand, thing. My little yeah, handheld recorder. yeah, that would have been great. Because there was only the, only the really the only reason I went to the fair. My girlfriend was in town, and I went. Uh, Where Matt. is your girlfriend, Norma? Oh, Matt. <laughs> Sparkland. He lives down south of me. <laughs> uh, so and you I guys took, decided to go to the fair. You're going to win him a stuffed animal or something. Yeah. Right, exactly. I told him, I said, I can win you a big uh, banana with a Rastafarian hat on or something like that. <laughs> Which fair is this again? It's called the South Florida Fair. Uh, it's like off a of Southern Boulevard. Is there a jingle? Because it seems like you want to sing it. Such a good jingle. But I can't remember. The, it goes like, Hell Fair, have the fun, <laughs> South Florida Fair. That's it. It's good. Have the fun. Wouldn't it say it again at the something end? Something fair, something fun, South Florida fair. So it was a little date night for me and my girl, and we. <laughs> so I, 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 we decided. I decided. I came to work yesterday, and I decided early. I was like, I should go to the fair. It's the last weekend for it, and I thought maybe I'll see something. Uh, I, could, I had. I didn't come up with much during the week to talk to you about. So it would have been great if it was next weekend. We could all. Win. I know, right? Yeah. So. Um, so I thought I'll go and maybe I'll find, you know, something. So I, I started looking at stories about state fairs and everything's about the food. It's it's a tired sure. fucking topic. So I was looking for, I found a bunch of stories about weird shit people see at fairs, whatever that goes on at fairs. But anyway, the weirdest thing I saw at the South Florida Fair was as I was leaving, you know, I did eat, I ate pickle pizza and I ate bacon wrapped meatballs. Those were the only two things I had. Pickle pizza, like pickles so on pizza? Good. Pickle pizza should be a thing, not just at fairs. It I've never be heard of it. It's a white pizza with like a garlic sort of sauce, like a white garlic sauce as the sauce. Then there's pickles, kind of like a drizzle of ranch, like a very light Ooh, drizzle, drizzle of ranch. drizzle. I like drizzle. It's really good. But the one, the thing that really caught my attention was as we're like the very last person, as we're walking out of it, the person that was leaving in front of us was carrying like a six foot tall box that he he'd, he'd bought a flagpole at the fair. Okay. So why Let's would see. you buy a flagpole at a fair? The Big E is like the big fair around here. It's the New England Fair. It's pretty yep. cool, and they have this one humongous room yeah. that just has all these products. That you could probably talk yourself into buying about a third of them at any moment, because they just Flag seem like though? 
they seem really interesting. And the way they set it up, just it totally hits your senses of like, yeah, I do need six kinds of olive oil. Like, and you could just end up with. Do they have really good deals on flagpoles? Wouldn't you no. rather? So why exactly? Everything at a fair is really expensive. So why would you buy a flagpole and walk around with a six foot tall box for? Because some guy, it's four like that. Hours. Those lights for the house. What was that infomercial you yeah. showed us at one point? I'm sure, they have an yeah, infomercial those... one in. It's like the best flagpole, hurricane proof. You get a free. Yeah, but when you talk about an infomercial, they're going to deliver it to your house. Wouldn't you rather have? Would you want to walk around? Because he also had like three kids and a wife. So he had to walk around the fair with maybe three he kids wanted and a to, wife. Maybe he wanted to leave. So he's like, if I buy this flagpole, we'll have to leave. Because I'll be like, I can't carry this flagpole around the fair. That's it's a good move. That's a good it's move. Interesting. Um, that's, that's really the only thing I could think of. Like if you just saying like, honey, I, got, I can't carry this flag. It was such a deal. Or maybe there are things where you get really great deals at the fair. I just don't. I don't get why a flagpole would be a, even at a fair. It just it's seems usually like a weird not a item good deal. Me. It's just usually something that's a little bit different than anything you've ever able to buy. Do so you have Do you have one example of one thing that you're talking about? Because it was just it's so odd to me to buy a flagpole at a fair. Like it, that, they'll have like a car wax. That's like a special kind of car wax. Or and you actually will like. I'm there for the fair. I I don't. There's all stuff for timeshares and that in that little oh, covered that area. Stuff, yeah, There's, I'm not going there. No. Um, these but are you all will, products. But you'll stop, you'll stop at the wax car, guys. I won't, but kiosk. like, if you're into car stuff. Oh, I thought you said you would buy like two thirds of the products. No, I'd say one there. third of them I could talk myself into. Like they'll have. But car wax isn't one of them. Can you no. give me an example of one that you might have <laughs> talked yourself into? Just because this is, it's very, it was interesting enough that I thought I. I Mine bring would this probably up up usually be food items. Like there'd be some kind of pretzels with like cool flavoring, like. Like your thing with pickled pizza, it'd be like some sort of flavoring of pretzel, and I'd try a sample, and I'd think it's really good, so I'd buy like four kinds of pretzels or something. Right. Then well, what I really wanted to do was, if I had the microphone, I should have gone up to him and say, "This is the, mo- the you are the most inter- uh, in a in a in a place full of interesting sights and sounds <laughs> and smells. You are the one that interests me the most. Why did you buy a flagpole here? I don't understand." This would have worked better at the top of the show, but we'll, we'll do it anyway. Oh, okay. Hi, Jared. It's me, Mark. <laughs> do you remember a while back? 107. When, do you remember a while back when we had our 100th episode, non-spectacular? <laughs> then I tried to make episode 105 spectacular but failed. Then I tried to find some spectacularity in the number 106 and failed again. I not only failed, but I also didn't succeed. I'm starting to feel like Colonel Harlan Sanders of Kentucky Fried Chicken fame. Anyway, I promise not to try anymore. I simply wanted to give you a single fact about the number 107, and then I'll let you get into your stupid cisk stories. (laughs) Wait a second. Why did you bring up Colonel Harlan Sanders? Why did you drag his name through the mud? (laughs) I'm glad you asked that, Jared. (laughs) Colonel Harlan Sanders was uh, born in 1890 in Indiana. Colonel Harlan Sanders... The founder of Kentucky Fried Chicken is famous not only for his chicken recipe, but also his numerous failures in life and in business. (laughs) Wow. At the ripe young age of five years old, his father died, leaving only his mother to fend for and support three children, including Harlan, which I don't know that that's really a failure that his father died. I think it's of the author to blame that on him. I know, that's some six-year-old, and you're like, wow, I can't believe your dad's dead. Good job, (laughs) six-year-old. While his mother left for days on end, because she was now supporting the kids without the father that Harlan killed, Harlan was forced (laughs) to help take care of his siblings and became proficient cook, a proficient cook, during this time, learning how to make bread and vegetables and advancing in his knowledge of cooking and preparing meat by the age of just seven years old. Was that was that that weird? I feel like young kids were working all the time then. If my seven-year-old can't even wipe his butt, let alone make some bread and vegetables, so... So basically, uh, his mother remarried, subjecting the children to an arduous environment. Again, I don't think this is his fault. Yeah, Uh, another failure for Harlan. (laughs) You didn't get a good husband for her. By 14, he was working as farmhand in another place. He worked odd jobs for years, never really making anything stick. He owned a ferry boat company on the Ohio River. How does he go from farmhand to owning a ferry boat company? There seems like there's a middle missing there. Saved up his job. Saved up his money <laughs> from his farmhand job. 
Uh, he sold tires. He opened a restaurant inside a gas station. He began serving chicken dishes. He was 40 years old when he was doing that. He, 1939, he came to own a motel. I don't know what that means. <laughs> he came to own a motel and restaurant, which was destroyed by a fire just four months later. Again, his fault? until 1940 when he began to finalize his so-called secret chicken recipe at the age of 50. Does it have Uh, 107 spices? It's got... Is that why you're doing 107? No, it's... 107 was... We're just... We're like the Harlan Sander, or at least me. I'm the Harlan Sanders of... um, So you decided to just throw the 107 thing out the window and just do something else. Do you want the here? So that was the story. Harlan Sanders was a failure. Then he finally became a success, and hopefully that happens to me. Uh, the number one. You're about the same age too, forties. I know. Did you know that the number one hundred and seven is an emerp? <laughs> you have something in your throat. Emerp. All right. So I thought maybe <laughs> maybe a math guy would know this. Do you no, know I've never you? heard of an emerp. I want to do. All right. So write. Do you have a pen near you? Just write what? Write one zero seven. All right, here we go. One zero seven, and then write the word E M I R P. Okay. And tell me if you can tell me what an emerp is. Look at one zero seven is one, and that's the word for it. Can you deduce from those two things, number one zero seven and a word spelled E M I R P? Can you tell me what an emerp is? It's a prime number backwards. Exactly. It's a pri- it's a number that's prime. Front and back, uh, forwards and backwards. Oh, so forward one zero and seven, backwards. one zero seven, and seven zero one are both prime numbers. Therefore, each of those numbers is an emerp. Are we moving anyway. on to my mediocre cisk stories, as you described them. Stupid. I said stupid. Oh, sorry. Stupid. You just, that's good alliteration there. Stupid, stupid cisk, cisk stories. stories. Yeah. Exclamation point. Or it could have been spectacular cisk stories, much like your episode 107. Are these pretty spectacular? Can we turn it around here? Cisk, cisk, cisk stories. Cisk stories. First one is about something that was probably a big part, I would, I'm going to assume, of your childhood and was of mine as well. Fire? Setting fires in places you weren't supposed to? That no. That was a huge part of it. Oh, okay. Got yeah, it. Yeah, but fires, that's a good one. Yep. Um, no, Sports Illustrated. Were you a Sports Illustrated Heck yeah. guy? Heck yeah. Yep. Like, that was like the thing. Like sometimes you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, oh, did you have a subscription? Yeah, I think so. I think I got it in the mail. Might have been my dad's, but yeah. I don't think, I think I had my own. Like, we got it, Ooh. I remember, a while, and then it would you know be off, I know? and I'd have to go to my friend's house and read it. Did and... you have to sell magazine subscriptions in, like, 7th or 8th grade to, I don't know what they ended up using that money for, but... <laughs> <laughs> By funding terrorism or Mr. something. Mr. Galdefson went on vacation with all your magazine <laughs> money. Well, I know in, so I, in Connecticut, we had middle school back then, 7th and 8th grade, and both Were years, you at a private middle school or public? No, public public okay. middle school we had a fundraiser every year and it was always selling magazine subscriptions and you could get stuff like um i think i got my fir- first cordless phone ever because i sold a certain amount of magazine <laughs> subscriptions you know your neighbors would buy <laughs> from you yeah but what a great racket so i wonder what the what money went to i have no idea maybe to buy like the school's uniforms or something i don't yeah, know but like ultimately the cut the school got was probably so low compared to what the company made the company that was that putting it on it. they gave you a sh- phone that probably worked for like six months and the oh, school I still got, have it it's one of the best it? phones I've ever owned in my <laughs> life you could see through I remember you could see through it it was uh and the schools get 10 cents on the dollar yeah of whatever it is and then they just made like a huge profit on you doing all the labor to sell the magazines so you're saying I got f- I should go back <laughs> no it's, I think we so still whole, do them so maybe I shouldn't be so I'm always about buying my sports, I'm always I hope buying sports, I hope Sports Illustrated goes out of business now, now that you've changed my mind. I, I'm always buying wrapping paper from my nephew for like two twice as much as you could buy it at the store at some that's fundraiser. They, that's their fundraiser? Wrapping paper? Yeah, it's like, I don't know, for his preschool. And Michelle's like, yeah, it's 50 bucks for his wrapping. I'm like, <laughs> 50 bucks for wrap? Let's just give the school 20 bucks. I used to, I used to swim laps for money. They just <laughs> not, ju- like, not like my own money. <laughs> Hey, hey, kid, swim some laps for me. 
Give, give me you a nickel cents. a lap. <laughs> you give me 25 cents, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, we had the. I wrote, that I Mark is the best lap swimmer. You should pay him. Dude, I remember. I, I have to go around to my neighbors, say I am swimming laps for whatever you just said. Muscular. I forget what I was. <laughs> again, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to what I was raising money for when yep. I was a youth. But I did it a lot. I did a lot of fundraisers, too, didn't I? Wow, you were just like a giver. No, I was just on teams. I played sports, and like inevitably yep. you'd have to go around and sell stuff for your team. Yeah, you sell some marked up things. Like the Girl Scout cookies now. They get like eight cookies for $6 or something like that. Yeah. And you can't turn away the little girls selling. I just give them money. I just give. I don't take the cookies anymore. Yeah, I I saw you do that last time I was there. (laughs) Really? Yeah, last time we were there, we were at a market, and you just gave the girl. You said, "I don't want the cookies," and the girl looked at you like you were the richest man in America. (laughs) (laughs) Keep your cookies, little girl. (laughs) I need. Here's ten dollars. I need not those extra calories. Here's ten (laughs) dollars for your valiant effort in selling. I swear she did. She looked at you. There was like a twinkle in her eye, and you were like the richest man. All right. Well, so this story, I guess Sports Illustrated has not done well since the internet boom. Just sad, really. I feel like they could have turned into a website and done well, but they just didn't. I mean, because they always had the best articles, right? They'd have the great news. They're good writers. And then for the... For your teen self before the internet, they had the swimsuit issue. That was. And they used to have the thing faces in the crowd. Or was it faces in the crowd? Faces or, uh, in the crowd. Yeah, they'd have a little profile on a store, on a, like a, a youth that had done something spectacular. And, and then a lot of times later in life, you'd see them. Ten years later, you'd see them professionally playing whatever they were doing. So this, they had a trivia question on one of the sports sites that I read about. Who appeared on the most covers? Because remember, the cover was always the coolest thing to appear on through 2016. So only through 2016. Uh, I didn't know if you wanted to try to guess. Is number one Muhammad Ali? Muhammad Ali is number two. Okay. Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan was number one. So this is from the Wall Street Journal. It's about a new drinking game that's sweeping Britain. And I think this is pretty awesome and more companies should do this. Okay. So there's a pub chain called Weatherspoons, which is so British, like you would... So they have an app for their chain where you can order drinks on the app, but you can input your location manually for that. So basically here's how it works. Say you were in J.D. Weatherspoon in Orlando or in Jupiter, Florida. You go there with your friend, Matt. You guys are on a date. My mates. Your mates, Matt. You're on a date. I know you're there. And I can put in my app on my phone that I am there with you and order you a drink for your and pay for it. So basically, I can order it for you and pay for it while I'm not there. So it's known in Britain as Spoons, and it prides itself on extremely cheap beer, cavernous locations, and clean restrooms. Okay, that's nice. I like a clean restroom. So it's actually become a game in England, this this idea that I just told you. Every day, there's a Facebook page called Weather Spoons the Game. Every day, those hoping for few, few, free... Wow. <laughs> those... Few, <laughs> few. Every day, let me start over. Those hoping for free drinks send photos of their faces, a Weatherspoon's pub name, table number, and a plea for generosity. So the Jeez. Facebook page picks 12, about a 12 people to post on the Facebook page with their pitch, and it usually ensures a few free rounds. So basically, you post so on this page. for drinks? Yeah, and people watch the Facebook page and buy drinks for the people there so the one guy was there with his his grandmother and grandfather and they posted it and he wrote nothing crazy i've got to put him to bed don't buy us too many drinks and basically they were getting wine and beer and shots of tequila at their table and basically they got they show a picture before the grip they're just they're laughing and then at the end they're just they look kind of drunk puke all over his shirt yeah they look like wasted at the end one guy uh, was diagnosed. Oh, the guy who created the game 
was diagnosed with cancer and his partner left him. So he, I don't know, I think he started it. And then other people have been like, so Man. weird things. One, this person, had his hamster of three years died. This one, two brothers were catching up for the first time in two years. This was one about a guy losing his virginity. I don't know. I think it'd be if I was home and I my kids were home and I couldn't go out. I think it'd be fun to buy someone a beer that I thought was doing something, even if it was a lie. I don't care. Just having a fun time. Hey, I'm a flagpole salesman and I, have, I didn't make any <laughs> flagpole sales at the South Florida Fair. I, so I made yeah. one. I sold one flagpole this year. I lost. I thought it'd be a good idea to sell flagpoles at the fair. I lost my shirt though. And it was kind of stupid because I just need a beer. And would you, anybody out there, want to buy a poor flagpole salesman a beer? Yep, and I'd buy it. Yeah, and then they post other pictures on the Facebook when they get all the drinks. I just, I do, I should show you the one with the parents. It's pretty funny. Let me show. So this is the beginning when they went out. And this is after they had all the drinks. <laughs> they just look, look at all those drinks. He looks like he's getting bad news. At yeah. the beginning, it's an old man, you know, probably 75 to 80 year old man, 75 year old, 80 year old woman. Beginning, they both had big smiles on their face. Now they have one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, nine <laughs> drinks in front of them. And neither of them look happy at all. The old man well, looks like he's being told that your car just got towed and you're going to have to. And looks, is there snow behind that? Oh, no, it's just a white house. No, the guy looks like his son is telling him, you know, you have to drink all these drinks because we went on the website. <laughs> and he's like, what the f***? And then the woman looks like she's questioning her life choices. Someone bought me a, um, a bottle of vodka, I think, for Christmas. And then someone left behind, or I got returned to me a box that no one ever claimed and it was a box full of monster energy drinks <laughs> why are you laughing already i didn't even get to the good part of the story so i just I'm, love the idea of like when there's returns you know like, i don't know who this is for well, no, you're trying to, I, open this, it up i wait like three these are like three-year-old monster energies <laughs> and a bottle of vodka that i got at christmas those definitely don't go bad monster energy for I don't sure i think so they certainly no, taste definitely like, not yeah so I've never had a um, Monster Energy drink and vodka today, but that's the one I'm drinking. That's what I've been drinking all episode long. Have you ever had a Monster Energy otherwise? Mm, I played golf once, and my buddy stopped. He's like, can we get energy drinks before we get out there? And I was like, huh, I've never actually been with that. You know, I'm 47. This was the story I'm telling probably happened when I was 31 or something. People didn't, like our age, people don't drink Monster or energy drinks, do no. they? No. So, so high school I've, kids drink them like crazy. It can't be good for them. So I've never really, I've only had like two or three in my entire life, this being one of those two or three times. Yeah. Um, I mean, I had Red Bull for a short period of time when there was like the Red Bull and vodka. Watch me take a sip. I can't take a sip and not make like Yeah, you, you looked grumpy when you were doing it before. It's the worst, like, <laughs> when it goes down your throat, it's awful. What's taurine? What is it? Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> I don't know. It's no. on the top of the can there. Like, look at the, look at the top rim of the can. Oh, oh, right there. Yeah, but it must be something important if it's up there, right? Well, there's L. Okay, so if we're going for the top, you're right. Wait, I should be listening to this. There's taurine. There's zero sugar. It says taurine plus zero sugar plus L carotene plus. Tor tor oh, it got all the way back around to taurine. <laughs> it's circular. <laughs> <laughs> There's no equal sign. Just equals what? <laughs> What's the, the equation? <laughs> there's no equal. It's just plus plus plus. It's just pure energy. No no <laughs> finite. No finish to it. Equals a heart attack. Oof. I am. Yeah, I am you're you're now you're flying. Right you're now. flying right now. You want to do another hour? <laughs> you wish you had. I wish you had started this like a half hour before Ooh, the episode. We should have. No, I really excited. I'm excited. I'm I already excited. put the sign up in my window. I made it super simple this time. I just wrote, I will be, I, I, you know, if you listen to the show enough or if you speak to me enough, yes. you know that I I've, I've have issues with putting signs in my window and people understanding them. I feel like I'm a very... You're a good writer, so I feel well, like you're I just clean, mean, right? I, I feel like grammar and stuff like that is something yeah, that I pay attention to. Yeah, you're strong at that, yep. So... If I write a sign, I feel like if you just would, if you would just take the ten. Why do you seconds do that? But maybe it. you need to do the opposite of what you would think, because most people are not good at grammar. 
to do it. Oh, oh. <laughs> poorly write it? Intentionally yes. write it poorly? Yeah. All right, so it, the one that I wrote, all it says is, I will be closed Friday, uh, February 2nd, and Saturday, February 3rd. Reopen Monday? No, I didn't write that. I didn't oh, write that. I didn't are you going to reopen? Are you closing oh, for good? Don't you, don't you just <laughs> assume that if I only wrote two days, don't you just assume that that means I'll be back on Monday? Does that mean this week is the end, oh, Mark? Why are so you closing? Why do you can't you just use your imagination? Just there's boxes everywhere. I've never. I've been here for thirteen. <laughs> is this years a going now. out of business sale this no, week? No, no, I'm not closing. I promise I'm Can not I closing. Can I just take all the books? Two that days. Are up front? Everybody takes a vacation, don't they? I have two friends coming. Do I? Have, I don't even want to have to explain this, but I got two friends coming into town. I'm just entertaining them for two days. I don't want to work until five o'clock. She taught me more. Oh, this monster energy like, is going right to my head, and I'm not even kidding. I feel like I'm like. I know that we're. I know that if we're. If you play this around. episode, this your energy has turned in the mid episode. We're fucking around right now, and you're asking me these <laughs> fake questions of of the people that read the signs in my window. But there, it's getting me amped up to the point where I feel like these are what I really have to deal with. I'm not closing for good. I promise you. I, I'm not. It just says two days. It says two days because it's only two days. If I want, last time when I wrote more, you didn't understand that either. So please, please, just Friday, Saturday. That's all I want. I just want. I felt like you the other, or not you, the customer the other day. I was helping. There's this family in town that doesn't have a car. So this woman has been scheduling, like, pickups from work for this woman. But, no, so I was doing Wednesday. I had it in my book. And it was, it's at, like, 3.45. So she emailed me on Tuesday at, like, 3 o'clock. Are you picking up uh, the, the woman? I forget. I, don't, I actually don't know her name. She doesn't speak. Eng- <laughs> no, she doesn't speak English. So it's, you have a ride. It's like a fifteen-minute ride. She probably still has a name. And I, yeah, but English. I just, I don't remember what. But the fifteen-minute ride where you don't say anything, like I never <laughs> do that. You know, I speak all the time. It was the weirdest thing. I was just. What language does she speak? Ukrainian. Oh, well, you could do Russian. You didn't you take Russian in high school? Yeah, but well, I just say. Uh, Hello. Spasibo. <laughs> that means uh, thank you. <laughs> Do svidania. <laughs> but yeah, Ukrainians are at war with Russia. Wouldn't you yeah, think that's like... Yeah, but a lot like, of them speak it though, right? Yeah, but that would seem like aggressive maybe if I just start throwing some Russian... I pick her up, she doesn't know me, and I well, start you, throwing you, some Russian at her. Do you know how to say, I don't speak Ukrainian, but I do speak Russian, and that's the closest approximation I can come to. Can you, <laughs> do you know how to say that? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. Were there any songs in Russian that, like, we had to learn a song in Spanish? It was um, Uno de Enero, dos de Febrero, tres de Marzo, cuatro de yes. Abril. I can give her and all it just the, teach, it teaches the, you the months. Days of the week, yeah. I yeah. just, I just sang to her about the days of the week. That's something. <laughs> You're trying. Basically, I just, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. Like, I'm driving. And then am I like, am I supposed to like look over and smile or is that weird? Because I can't say anything. So I do that once in a while, like nod and be like, and then I just like, now I look like a weirdo doing that. How did she end? How did, why is she here? Do you know? You know, the war, like just leaving Ukraine and getting out. Really? Yeah. Yeah. They're getting out with their family. They have one relative here and they're just like, get out of the country and. Really? uh, Yep. So they're oh, trying to cool. get help. They're trying to get a car, actually. That's one of the things the lady's working on. But they don't have a car, so they're getting help from people with rides. But wow. the reason imagine I that. imagine no. leaving your war torn. God damn, there are some. They have two out kids there. who don't know the language at all. No. So they're in school. Like imagine going to school and you like you don't know anything or anybody, and nobody knows how to talk to you. So do people like them? Do they get like, I mean, I guess so, if people are kind of going out of the way to give her rides and stuff, right? Yeah, the people, sure. I mean, middle school's tough. I don't know how. I mean, Emma's, in, Emma's trying to be nice to the to the boy that's in her school. That's good. That's awesome. Yeah, we invited them over. The ki- Our kids played with them. Emma has oh, the... Dude, you the, should invite them over and have them cook with you. The Google like, Translate. Teach you how to um, cook things. Ukraine. I love like that. Like in the wintertime, they're like Russian food, Ukrainian food, German food. That's great. Like, cool you think it would food. come off weird? Like the first time we invite them over, we have them cook for us. Well, no, <laughs> not. We not bought you some you. ingredients. Why didn't you just make us dinner? Cook with you. Remember, I'm would. giving you rides. Make me dinner. <laughs> yeah, Deutsche And I gave her some. 
<laughs> I give him like a toilet cleaner too. You could clean up the bathroom. So the reason I told the story after years was the woman, I was supposed to pick her up on Wednesday at 3.40. Tuesday at 3 o'clock, the woman emails or texts me and says, are you picking up, I think it's Mariana. Are you picking up Mariana? Okay. And I said, "I tomorrow, I think. Is it tomorrow? Like, not today. Because she sent it at 3 o'clock and 3.40 is the time she get picked up. So she's like, looks, and she's like, oh, yeah, tomorrow. And then she writes back, yeah, I was just writing you to remind you about tomorrow. Like, she was kind of irked, like you get. <laughs> and I was like, but. Wait, you wrote what? Me- I'm like, Are you, you dragging f- me into this? When when it's Friday. I mean, she didn't write the date. She didn't say Wednesday at 3.40. She just... It'd be like if you said I was closed Friday and it was Friday and you didn't write the date. And somebody was like, wait, you're open. Then it would make okay. sense okay. for them gotcha. to say, wait, you're not closed. Today's Friday. And you're like, no, no, it's next Friday. I just wrote Friday. But yeah, but I mean, date. everybody around here speaks English as their first language. So I feel like that's... My my anger is more founded than no, but this was an ink, the woman who's I organizing know. it. So she wrote that, and I wrote back. Well, I was worried because it was before the time that day she was getting picked up, and she's like, "Oh, now that makes sense." <laughs> All right, should I wrap it up? You should. All right, theme song by Maggie Yellox. Social media by Cousin Paul. I thought Instagram was back, but we haven't had a post this week, so I think Paul our, our He got excited quit. I could see that. <laughs> burned out. Our it's social like me, media like, guy got got out quick and then burned, yeah. He probably made the same mistake I did. Bunch of bunch of energy drinks <laughs> right when he got into it. It was like this is I I need to get it up, I need to get it out there, I need you know. Yeah. Just and then he was doing then, like two posts in a day at the beginning. Yeah. How much taurine does this require? Yeah. But Instagram is back somewhat. Check it out. <laughs> at the Mag Room Pod. Send us an email, themagroom at hotmail.com, or a letter to the address or a fax. 561 744 1831. I'd really like a story about something that you got at a fair that was not a traditional fair, fair. Get, see what I did there with the words fair? Fair and fair. I um, like that. Like if you, I don't want, like I said, a banana with a Rastafarian hat on it. I wonder if you remember what a yeah. flagpole. I actually went to a fair once with a girl. And car wax. Went, I feel like there's a lot of car wax. I, I I brought some. I went to a fair with a girl once, and what she won was Tupperware. She won Tupperware Ooh. at a fair. Doing what? Um, uh, it's kind of a game. It's a game that you. Um, all right, so you drop a ball into a little thing and it like bounces around on its way down like um like plinko or what or uh, okay like con- yep. connect yep. connect four type of sure yeah and where it lands ends up being like a either a bingo card or a connect um uh um what's the x's in the o's game tic-tac-toe yeah but isn't there a different word for it <laughs> that would, I, don't, I don't think so. That's what you, that's what tic tac toe is. Tic tac toe with the X and O and three in a row, you win. That's tic tac toe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Too too much energy drink yeah. today. You're on a, you're on the back end now. We've <laughs> seen your whole arc. You went you went from <laughs> dying to you were fly. You were talking like a hundred words a minute, and now you don't even know what tic tac toe is called. Tic tac toe. T i c t i c t o. This is a great arc that you followed in this thirty minutes. All right. Well, put down your phone this week, especially if you're seeing your friends that you haven't seen in six months. Put that down, engage with them. Hashtag spider dreams are real. Remember our <laughs> friend, Glen Allen Hill, fundraiser. Maybe we'll, maybe that's what we'll do for our school fundraiser, spider dreams. <laughs> you could sell magazines to raise money to, to help heal people who have spider dreams. And this week, um, I got nothing to go into the end here. If you don't buy a flagpole, if you can't find a flagpole <laughs> at your local county state fair, you can and you're always. Sad, <laughs> then you can always you stick, can with, always the stick with the mag room. And everything, and everything else, else is cream cheese. Ooh, ooh, I like my groom. I like my groom. Ooh, ooh, my groom is good. My groom is good. Ooh, ooh, 
I like my groom. I like my groom. Ooh, ooh, ooh my groom is good. My groom is good. The my groom's good. Ooh, ooh, I like my groom. I like my groom. Ooh, ooh, my groom is good. My groom is good. Is there a jingle? Because it seems like you want to sing it. Get on the rides before the South Florida Fair even opens. Be first for the fun at the special Ride-A-Thon, Thursday, January 13th. It's only $10 with a coupon found online at SouthFloridaFair.com. Share the fair, share the fair. South Florida Fair. Have the fun. Wouldn't it say it again at the end?